There's been a few stories floating around the England camp just recently, and obviously the Kevin Peterson one is one that's, that's made front and back page news. Um, the medical side of things would suggest that Andy Flower and Andrew Strauss weren't happy with, uh, with KP going home. There was rumours of uh, the fact that he could have got through the last couple of weeks uh, with a couple of painkillers because there's only two or three games to play and could have, could have toughed it out and got through the rest of the, this World Cup and then had his operation done. But that for some reason wasn't the option that Kev took. He decided to fly home and uh, get his injuries is sorted out, which, which is fine, it's his prerogative and it's his career and his future, but to then, I suppose, be pictured coming out of uh, nightclubs and stuff late in the evening probably wouldn't have done his, his reputation much good within the side. So there may be an, an area there for, uh, for people to, to read something into that's might, that might not be the case, but it's clearly affected England's chances in this World Cup because he's a world-class player. So uh, something for the management to sort out when, uh, when they get back and see Kevin. The opening slot is one that's caused problems since Kevin Peterson's uh, decision to go home and, and England surprisingly for me have gone with Matt Pryor. I say surprising not because he's not a good player but because of clearly the fact that when he was in Australia a couple of months back or only six weeks ago now uh, he was dropped down the order because he wasn't scoring runs at the top of the order and he didn't do too badly batting at number six and went to the World Cup as a number six and now Kevin's gone home and he's been promoted back up the order again despite the fact that he's not been scoring runs. So a bit of muddled thinking and an unclear message really and that they've changed their, their status in terms of what they want from the top of the order and maybe Matt Pryor doesn't quite know how to play the situation now as well so he doesn't look as though he's being his natural self. Um, the wickets are obviously different as well but and for me Ian Bell would have been a much better option. I can understand him wanting to keep the solidity of numbers three, four and five in there but Bell's the one in form, Bell's the one that, that can play all the shots, has got the range of strokes uh, and Matt Pryor to me isn't the right option to, to do that job purely from the fact that the message that they must be giving him, the England boys, is uh, we don't know where to bat you, so you're just in the team and you'll have to bat somewhere because you've got to play anyway. So, uh, unclear message, and Ian Bell would have been the man for me. This has obviously been an extremely long winter for, for the English boys, and also not just the winter, but last summer as well with the full on series that they had. So, it has been a tough tour, it's been a long time away from home. And yes, there's going to be tiredness, you're going to pick up injuries. Another factor is going to be the fact that England haven't had any success against the associate members' sides uh, that they've played and they've lost to. Um, so therefore, the opportunity to rest a couple of players and, and play the Luke's, likes of Luke Wright and James Treadwell, they haven't had that opportunity yet because England have had to win every single game that they've played in. So yes, there have been injuries. Yes, there has been loss of form and loss of confidence. And, and I do believe that these tours that they go on are too long nowadays. To have a, a World Cup for six, seven weeks, this one's going to be, is, is crazy after a long Ashes winter. Seven one-day internationals, two 2020s against Australia as well. I see there's been a statement from the ICC to say that England won't play any more seven one-day international series. It's only going to be five. Well, that's only two days less cricket, so it's not really a massive cutback. So there's lots of things to be looking at, but England boys should be tired, yes, because they're putting their heart and soul into every game. But on the other hand, you can understand the perspective from the supporters who say they only play once or twice a week. So it's a balancing act, but the tiredness has definitely been a factor. Uh, and again, it's been a, a problematical tour for England so far. But if they beat the West Indies this week, then all will be forgotten.